Hey, 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 Team HQ Sports. Welcome in. It's season 12 of HQ Sports officially. I'm your host, Lauren Gambino, and this season, we're changing up the game format just a little bit. There will be more opportunities to score some prizes throughout our game. And of course, the grand, grand prize of cold hard cash if I could complete a sentence and if you can make it through the end of the final round. Oh, this season, we're gonna be going for 15 rounds of sports only trivia, boosting it up just a little bit. Prizes will be offered after round seven, 11 and 15, of course. You can choose to claim those early prizes and end your game an early winner, or you can go all in on that final prize of $1,000. Cold, hard cash, baby, and bragging rights of course, as our HQ Sports MVP. Remember, with a new season, points and levels have been reset. You've probably noticed that. You can earn points and coins by playing the daily challenge at any time, or you can boost your points tonight with a multiplier to help you get those free passes back. It makes winning each and every game at HQ easier all season long, not just for tonight, but it will definitely help you tonight too. If you haven't heard the newness going on at HQ, listen up. We have a brand new game and it's called HQX. It's not trivia at all. It's actually all about creativity. Our new host, Matt, is gonna give you a topic and you get to go on a photo scavenger hunt of sorts. You'll be able to like and dislike other people's submissions. It's like you're voting on what you think is the most clever, the most creative. And at the end, the person with the most likes our winner. Join us for our next game. It's this Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. It really is a whole lot of fun, a cool way to be creative and do something interesting. Ah, and back here on HQ Sports, before that, on Wednesday, cue the eye of the tiger, because it's Rocky Trivia at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. All the movies, all of your favorite lines, all in one game. So if you love Rossi, I mean Rocky, that never gets old. I'll see you Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time for that. All right, team, we always get a little warm up in before our game starts, and we usually start things out on Twitter. But today, with fantasy playoffs underway, I want to know one thing, of course. What needs to happen for you to win your fantasy league? Nothing? You're already out? Or you need a miracle? Or you got it locked up? You're winning this thing. Let me know right now what needs to happen for a fantasy win for you. Let's see what everyone said. Ah, uh, 40% of you, you need a miracle. Do you have players going tonight? What's going on? Let me know those players in the chat that have been on fire for you. Put the little fire next to their name all season long. Give them some credit. This is actually my second year in a row where I fell to the middle of the pack. No playoffs for me, but luckily for me, Gab is in the fantasy playoffs for us. Um, I think I'm losing my touch, but thank God I'm good at asking sports trivia questions because we got 15 of them on deck. So let's get this win. Round one starts right now. What shape is most frequently associated with IndyCar and stock car racing? Oval, diamond, or octagon? Oh, my 10th grade geometry teacher warned me, math is everywhere. Fans who worship the baseball diamond know that all too well. And in this case, racing does have pretty sharp turns, but not sharp enough to be an octagon. It's an oval, it's round one. You know that oval is your answer here at round number one. 30,722 of you getting that one right. Shaping up to be a fun game already. But before we move on, Pick up extra lives, not only for this game, but for future games. They never expire, and you can use multiple per game. And with 15 rounds tonight, they definitely come in handy if a little TKO question comes along. So hook yourself up, be prepared. You gotta be in the game in order to win the game. Round two. Which competition would most likely feature a golfer from South Africa? The Davis Cup, President's Cup, or Ryder Cup?
The Davis Cup might feature a South African player, but it's tennis, not golf. The Ryder Cup is the USA versus Europe, but the President's Cup is the US versus the rest of the world. So golfers like South Africa's Ernie Els are likely to be present. President's Cup is your answer here. Oh my goodness! Is it our first TKO at round number two? Wow! TKO hit hard on this one. I thought you guys were gonna get this one. It was just this weekend where the US took home their 10th President's Cup led by Tiger Woods, the man himself. 12,641 of you getting that one right. I see over 340 of you jumping back in the game right now. I hope the rest of you had your levels up to level two. Let's do this round three. Which of these Heisman records did Joe Burrow not set this past weekend? First transfer to win, highest percentage of points, or best margin of victory? It was a big night for a player who wasn't considered good enough to start at Ohio State. But now LSU's Joe Burrow has several records, including highest percentage of points and biggest margin of victory ever. He's not the first transfer to win. Come on, you should know that. 13,623 of you getting that one right. Yeah, I say you should know that because he's the third consecutive transfer to win. So look at that. All right, we're on to round number four. Let's do this. What is the only number you'd write down in, a, in an official scorebook for this triple play right here? Take a look. Oh, yeah, they start the runners off. Oh, triple play. Bat. Caught by Cabrera. There's one, there's two, and there's three. What is the only number you would score for that triple play? Is it three, four, or two? It's the extremely rare unassisted triple play and it's completed by the second baseman. The second baseman, of course, in the scorebook is represented by a four. Four is your answer here, 18,468 of you. All right, we're looking like we're back on track here. I see over 250 of you, 300. Oh my gosh, those numbers are skyrocketing. 600 of you using your head, clicking on that heart, getting back in the game right now. You could score that a number one, if you got that one right. But we're on to round five, let's do it. At what school did Hall of Famer John Wooden play? UCLA, Purdue, or Kansas? John Wooden is known from his years dominating as head coach at UCLA, but he was also inducted into the Hall of Fame for his playing days at Purdue. There he is. Looking sharp, played at Purdue, 14,503 of you getting that one right. He was also the first person ever to be enshrined as a player and a coach. The more you know. Round six, what fighter went 20 years in between title defenses? Muhammad Ali, George Foreman, or Evander Holyfield? He actually went 21 years, 1974 to 1995. In the interim, he kept pretty busy, you know, having a bunch of kids named George and selling moms and dads everywhere the George Foreman Grill. George Foreman is your answer, 9,397 of you getting that one right, losing over 8,500 of you here just before our first prize question of the night. So you want to get back in this game right now, because if you get this next one right, all you have to do is get this next one right, and I'll be making you an offer you can't refuse. Round seven. Which women's track and field world record is not held by Flojo? 200 meters, 100 meters, or 400 meters? When runners double up, they usually go 100 and 200 or 200 and 400. So you can be pretty sure that 200 is in there, and it is. Flojo is still the record holder in the 200 and 100 meters, not the 400 meters. Let's see what we have here for winners. 400 meters is the answer here at round number seven. As soon as I see how many of you smarties got that right, 3,625 of you, 
then the offer begins. It looks like we were offering 304 coins to all of you, 3,625, who answered that question correctly. Choose to take the prize now and end the game an early winner, or you could play on for the next prize, or even for the jackpot. Let's see. It looks like 1,467 players are ending the game early winners. Congratulations, you're all taking home 304 coins. I see an Eagles fan, Sharkins, congratulations. Hey Jude, 55, I see you there, nice specs. Scully girl, looking cute. 304 coins are going your way as well. All right, with the first winners taking off some coins, taking off with some coins for the, for the first uh, prize of the game. We're doing our little seventh round stretch and I wanted to know today on Twitter and I said, you know, direct message us anonymously. I want to hear your embarrassing sports moments. So here we go. I got a couple of them. One person says, I peed my pants sliding into third base in my Little League Baseball Championship game. I'm going to say there were a lot of pee my pants entries, so don't feel alone on that one. The next person says, in freshman football, I was captain of the team that won the coin toss and chose to kick. Also, don't feel bad about that. They do it in the pros. Dak Prescott did it yesterday. And uh, as a teen, this next one, as a teen, I was asked to jump in and be an umpire in a lower league softball game. I was watching first base. The very first play of the game was a close call at first. The problem was I wasn't paying any attention as I saw a puppy in the stands. I still don't know if I got the call right. No one's going to blame you for that one. Dogs rule. Round eight. The Philadelphia Flyers were once nicknamed the Broad Street what? Bad boys, bullies, or brood? Those were some fun answers. Thanks for participating if you did. Oh, well, they went from an expansion team in 1967 to back-to-back -back champs in 74 and 75, and their extremely Philly aggression during the 72 and 73 season led them to be nicknamed the Broad Street Bullies. Bullies is your answer. 6,014 of you getting that one right. A rep that clearly still follows Philly teams. No hate. I'm just stating the obvious. You want Philly fans on your side of a bar fight. Round nine, what engine maker has the greatest number of Indy 500 champions since 2000? Chevrolet, Honda, or Ford? The all-time record is still held by Offenhauser with 27 wins, though none since the 70s. This century, Honda has dominated. Since 2004, they've won 12. Honda is your answer at round nine. 3,399 of you are getting that one right and getting one step closer to our next prize. We have two questions left. Round 10. Over the last two seasons, what NFL team went from giving up the most quarterback sacks to allowing the least? Texans, Colts, or Chiefs? This is quite the dramatic turnaround of an O-line, and no teams did it like the Indianapolis Colts from 2017 to 2018. In 2017, 56 sacks. In 2018, only 18 all year from worst to first. The Colts went. Colts is your answer, 2,562 of you getting that one right. I guess it was just a little too late for Andrew Luck. Um, you know, they're back to the middle of the pack this year. No playoffs for them, but it was a, a pretty decent run for what they were dealt with in the beginning of the season, right? All right, we are on to our second prize of the night. If you can answer this question right, you know the drill. I'll be making you that offer. Let's see if you can refuse it or not. Round 11. Which of these players has not made a single All-Star game? Brooke Lopez, Chris Kamen, or Mike Conley? The Grizzlies' all-time leading scorer, one of the most consistently good point guards of his generation, Mike Conley, has been disrespected year after year. Mike Conley is the answer here. 2,533 of you getting this one right, and now you know what I'm going to say. 
you're gonna get some coins. 593 coins is the offer to 2,533 players. Take these coins and end the game an early champ right here. You can do it, or if you think you have what it takes, you can move on a few more rounds to the grand prize. 945 players are ending the game as early winners. Congratulations, you're all taking home about 593 coins. Not about, exactly 593 coins. BP Monkey, I see you there. A whole bunch of others looking good. Redder, 42. Look at the cats, look at the animals, look at the fans. Love it, congratulations. All right, for the rest of you team, Let's do this, eye on the prize. Round 12, who is the only quarterback to win MVP and miss the playoffs in the same season? Boomer Esiason, Ken Stabler, or Johnny Unitas? Only two MVPs in the NFL have ever missed the playoffs in the year they won the award. OJ Simpson in, in 1973, wow, not 2000, and Johnny Unitas in 1967. Johnny Unitas is the answer. Oh, we have another TKO at round 12. Bam! I know, you guys were kind of split on that one, but yes, Johnny Unitas is the answer. Whew, 704 of you are moving on. I see over 1,800 of you jumping back in the game right now. We only have a few rounds left. Let's do this, round 13. The oldest North American pro team still using its original name plays home games on what surface? Hybrid grass, ice, or bluegrass? Originally founded in 1873, the now CFL's Toronto Argonauts play their home games at Toronto's BMO Field, which currently uses hybrid grass. Hybrid grass is your answer. And we got another one here at round 13. Woo! I gotta say, Gab called this one. She saw it coming a mile away. Hybrid grass, 574 of you getting this one right. Oh, we have two questions left to the final prize. With numbers like 500 people left in the game, and I see 1,500 of you using those extra lives, you know we are expecting a big payout. So get back in here. There's two left. Round 14. Which of these sports leagues' logos was redesigned most recently? NHL, NFL, or MLB? The MLB has been using the same logo for decades, and the NHL's was introduced in 2005, but the NFL Shield was redesigned in 2008 to reduce the number of stars. You saw it? 25 to 8 to represent those eight divisions. NFL is your answer. Oh my God, could it be, Gab? Three in a row, TKO, wow! These are getting you tonight. It's all right, shake it off. It happens to the best of us. Rub some dirt in it, get back in here. 519 of you are through with flying colors to the over 1,000 of you clicking on those extra lives right now. This is your absolute last chance to do so because we're entering the final round. It all comes down to this for all the money, for everything that you Twelfth season. I'm ruining this really intense moment right now. And what I mean to say is it's all on the line and you gotta take it home right here. Round 15. Who was the last head coach to win an NBA title with the team he once played for? Rudy Tomjanovich, Steve Kerr, or Doc Rivers? This is it right here. Winning back-to-back -back titles in the 90s as a coach of the Houston Rockets, the franchise that drafted him number two overall in 1970, it's Rudy Tomjanovich for the win! Let's see how many winners we have. 677, congrats, you're our new HQ Sports MVP!
Oh yeah, I like what I see. 677 winners. That means we are all taking home a prize of about $1.48. I love it, Babaloo. I don't know, I can't really see what that is, Gab. Is that a dog? A cat? Oh, it's a cat. My eyes betray me. It is a cat. I am sorry, Babalu. JM Hansky, 148's coming your way. Steelers fan, TX Steeler, I see you there. Retro Kel, 148's coming your way. Is that Aaron Rodgers? Is Aaron Rodgers playing HQ Sports? Well, listen, if he is, I have a few pointers. No, I'm just kidding. Congrats, Aaron Rodgers. $1.47's coming your way. It's a big payout for Aaron Rodgers, Gab. He doesn't make that kind of money, you know? He needs it. Amazing work to all of our new winners, the first of our new season and our new format. Please let us know what you think. Find us on Twitter at HQ Sports and let us know what you think of season 12 so far. Ah, oh, congrats again. You should all be proud. Don't forget, on Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time, the eye of the tiger baby rocky trivia is taking over hq sports you won't want to miss that one yo adrian until next time i'm lauren gambino remember to hydrate focus and keep your head in the game